Hello everyone and welcome back. Firstly, apologies for taking so long to come back to Medieval Dynasty. I wanted to resume the series much earlier, but the developers have been adding so many new features that it made it difficult to do so. In some ways, that's a happy problem. More features equals more gameplay, right? But it does make it difficult to make a video when it might become outdated almost immediately. But in any case, we're back and more than happy to resume the series. The previous video only covered a day or two and is still accurate, except for a few minor differences. One is that you don't have to pick up feathers after chopping trees anymore. They get automatically added to your inventory. Another is that there's now overturned carts with random loot scattered around them. But as I mentioned, they're very minor. When we'd left off, we constructed our house, a small plot to get enough farming tech points to build a food storage building, and the food storage building itself. I started a new game and replayed up to the same point. It's about mid morning on day 2 of spring, year 1, and I'm now playing on version 0.6. We've got some bare essentials out of the way, but we're also going to need money to purchase some things that will allow us to ramp up our one-man village. The best way to make money early on is to craft stone knives. They sell for about 15 gold each and only require 5 sticks and 2 stones each to craft. Sticks and stones are gatherable everywhere around the house, so it shouldn't be too difficult to gather enough to make about 10 knives. There's many other ways to make money, you can make money by selling herbs or other ingredients you gather. You could chop down trees for logs, or you could even hunt to sell meat. But stone knives are great, because they allow you to improve your survival and crafting skills simultaneously. It used to be the case that you'd only get crafting tech points from this, but now gathering also gives survival tech points, which governs hunting and fishing. Even if you decide to make money in some other way, I recommend you take the same approach of processing before selling to add value. There's probably an obvious question of why stone tools would be used in the medieval era when iron tools were commonly available. It's a good argument, because why would someone buy stone knives when they can just gather sticks and stones and make their own just like we did? It's absolutely unrealistic, but I take it as a concession to gameplay in order to allow players to actually do things at the beginning and to have a tech tree to progress through. It would be more realistic for Rasumi to have to work as a laborer for Unigost and save to buy his own tools. But while that would be more realistic, it would not be entertaining gameplay and would also restrict player choice in what they can do at the beginning of the game to just manual labor. Whereas you can currently choose from a much wider field that includes gathering, hunting, resource gathering and crafting. So the current situation is a happy medium. In the latest version, you can also find a few items of clothing and a fishing spear just on the shore from the location of our house. They don't show up on Survivor Vision, so you have to manually spot them. All of these items are well beyond the technology and resources we've got access to at the moment, so make sure to get them. The current main quest also encourages us towards hunting. And the first milestone is to make a rabbit trap. Traps are passive gatherers, meaning that you just set them up and wait. There's a limit to how many you can have at any one time, so don't expect to just trap your way to riches, unless you increase the limit by our hunting skill perks. I generally don't, because the other perks are more useful. Up to this version, the location doesn't matter, so I place mine right next to the house for convenience. We'll leave that be while we visit Gustovia, but don't forget to bring all the knives you crafted. We're currently armed with just an axe and a knife. It's possible to fight animals with that, but don't expect the fighting mechanics to rival those of dedicated fighting games. I consider throwing and missile weapons to be by far the better options. The first throwing weapon you get is a wooden spear. You can craft one spear for one log, so chop down one or two maples. At this point, I'm only going to make four spears, but when hunting, I tend to carry around eight because they break very easily and many animals take many hits to die. You generally cannot afford to run out of spears when being charged by a pack of wolves or a bear. It's a good chance to speak about merchants. Any merchant will buy any good you sell, and they all pay the same amount, so there's no need to go shopping for a better price. But each merchant type sells different goods, and even the same type of merchant in different towns may have different items. For instance, Gustobi doesn't have a specialist tailor, 
so clothing is limited. Generally speaking, anything you purchase will be far more expensive than crafting it yourself. And even the cost of raw or intermediate materials will make it difficult to focus on just crafting. In many ways, the point of the game is to improve your technology, improve your skills, and construct the buildings that allow you to own the entire resource and manufacturing chain. Unigos will give us one of the two main side quests in the game. He wants us to speak to Sambor, the Huntsman, about some rumours of wolves he's mentioned. You can get to Sambor by following the road exiting Ostovia towards the east and crossing the river. Follow the road north until you come across a stretch of road with a fence on the right. There will be a broken section and if you go down the hill, you can see an overturned cart with some goods. I believe that the goods are randomised to some degree. But in this case we find the water skin, some mead and a sickle. The water skin allows us to move away from streams without worrying about taking damage from dehydration. And the sickle is used to harvest grain crops. You want to hurry and make it to Sambor while there's still daylight. Because the area around this hut is good for hunting deers, which will allow us to meet the last goal of the main quest. It's also possible to run into wolves on this occasion, so make sure you have your spear route and know how to use it. You hold the right button to prepare a throw and press the left button to throw the spear. Weapons have dropped and as you damage enemies they'll slow down. Aggressive animals will charge at you, so they're easier to hit but it's critical to make sure that you don't allow them to get too close to you. All meat is equally edible and animals will give either fur or leather and you can use those as crafting materials. In the case of wolves, it's fur. Make sure to pick up all your spears before you leave. If you have trouble finding them, then you can use survive vision to spot them. Each spear can only be thrown four times before it breaks, regardless of whether it hits or misses animals. So make sure you throw the ones with least condition so they break first, rather than carrying a bunch of low condition spears. In this instance, sunset is approaching, so it's too late to hunt deers, but we can speak to Sambor and sell him the knives that we forgot to sell at Gustobia. Make sure to keep one knife for your own use. On the way back home, you can use Survivor Sense to gather mushrooms and herbs. Mushrooms are not available in summer, so it's not a bad idea to stock up while they're available and place them in the food storage chest. It's useful, but not critical. Sleep is not required, so you should always take advantage of the time rather than sleeping. On this evening, we're going to stock up on straw and logs from the area around Gustovia. Another thing you should reserve for the night is mass crafting. At this stage, we only have the materials to make a few knives, but it's not a bad idea to gather materials during daylight and craft during the night when visibility isn't as important. There's an area north of our house and across the river where deers congregate. Since we didn't get a deer when we went to see the huntsman, it's important that we get one now. Headshots cause more damage, but any hit stuns animals, so if you're quick enough, you can stun lock them. This is why I recommend having around 8 speeds when hunting, because you're liable to run out mid kill. It's fine if animals flee because you can use survive vision to see the spears still in them. So even if you don't have the perk that highlights animals, you can always track the one you're hunting. These provide leather and we can use leather to create a small bag, which in turn is used in farming. A gathering throughout the day gave us two survival skill points. Maximizing survivalist to reduce our food and drink needs is important. 
the other point is spent on athlete because it allows us to sprint for longer. That's useful when you're trying to evade hostile animals, but it's also useful in speeding up normal travel. After maximizing athlete, I usually go for strong as an oak for the extra hit points, though it seems that strong as a rock might have the same overall effect by reducing damage by 10%. Neither is absolutely necessary, but it feels as if having 10% more health would be better for non-combat situations like poisoning and hunger and thirst. Once you have enough knives to have about 300 gold in total, you should head off to Gostovia. That amount should be enough to buy the materials you need to plant the plot we've prepared. The game encourages you to play as a subsistence hunter for the first few seasons. And there's nothing wrong with that, but spring and summer are the prime planting seasons and it would be a shame to waste a year's worth of planting. I prefer cabbages as the first crop. I made the mistake of only buying 8, but I should have bought 16. All crops need fertilizer, so we should buy one for each plot square. The second main side quest involves Alvin, a villager in Gostovia. We'll give him a stick, but be assured that the quest is more than just that. We gained the ability to build a workshop much earlier, but basically it allows us to make wooden artifacts. Most of them are just for sale, but you need a workshop in order to make the wooden bowls and wooden plates needed to make dishes. But going back to why I bought cabbages, at this point you want to stick to vegetables and avoid grain crops. The reason is that grains require tools to harvest and a barn to process into something useful. We've picked up a sickle and can make more, so that's not an obstacle, but building a barn is not worth the trouble just yet. From the choice of vegetables, you also want to take into account what dishes you can make with them. Once you reach Tavern 1 Tech, you can purchase recipes that allow you to make dishes that combine meat with cabbages carrots, beetroots and onions. It used to be the case that potage only required one cabbage and one meat, so it was clearly one of the best value vegetables. But now you need multiple items for each dish as well as wooden bowls, so it's not as easy to make dishes as it used to be. I'm ambivalent between cabbages for potage and carrots for stew. Soups require too much meat and too many beetroots for my liking and meat with gravy needs wooden dishes instead of bowls. But I still lean towards cabbages after all that. Because cabbages give you 7 nutrition per cabbage versus 5 per carrot, so they're better when eaten raw. And you can plant cabbages in spring and summer, meaning that you can plant something like flax in spring and cabbages in summer on the same plot. While trying to plant flax and carrots requires dedicated plots for each. I also recall that some of the side quests will give you carrot or onion seeds, whereas you have to buy cabbage seeds anyway. So all in all, cabbages are still my choice, which I think fits well with the Eastern European setting of the game. It's also a good idea to harvest the unripe berries from the bushes you find around. These berries are inedible and poisonous, but I'm not harvesting them for food. As you might have seen earlier, we had to purchase fertilizer to grow crops. That quickly adds up and it's far more efficient to make your own. There's two ways. One is to have pigs. They produce manure that you can then turn into fertilizer. But that's well ahead of us tech-wise. By far the easiest way is to let food rot. Any food that reaches zero condition during the end of season will become rotten and can be processed into fertilizer. Berries are all right as food, but you need large amounts to get any meaningful nutrition, so they're better used as ingredients for fertilizer and as cooking ingredients rather than eaten raw. It takes about 10 rotten berries to make one fertilizer, and you can collect a very large amount from a few bushes. Since it doesn't matter whether they're ripe or not, you should start collecting them in spring. I typically tend to collect at least 500 berries, and preferably more than 1,000 unripe berries. It's worth noting that bushes that you harvest in spring will not have any berries come summer, so it's better to harvest far from home if you think you'll need berries for cooking. Drop them as one item, somewhere convenient like a house, where you can pick them up before the end of season. 
You want them in your inventory because that's where food rots fastest. It'll take two seasons for the berries to fully rot. You'll want to check on your traps periodically and reset them after they catch something. You'll want to make some spare hose in a bag if you haven't got one yet. Then take your fertilizer and seeds to the plot. Equip the bag and select fertilizers from the radio menu. Each plot square will need one fertilizer, followed by hoeing. Then re-equip the bag and select cabbage seeds and lay one seed per square. And that's it. You just have to let the season change. No need to water or any other maintenance. You take some preparation and planning to plant crops. But small plots don't take much time to plant or harvest. So you should always be growing something. Once that's done, you should go back to harvesting berries and picking up sticks and stones. Check the rabbit trap on occasion and reset or reconstruct it as needed. When it gets close to midnight, you'll want to go back home, pick up your berries and get as many materials to make stone knives. This is because time passes while you craft, but the seasons do not pass while you're still in the middle of crafting something. So if you queue up dozens of items right before midnight, you're effectively getting free time. There's also the bonus that you avoid the chance of dying from starvation or thirst that you'd have if you queued up hundreds of items for crafting during the season, walked away to do something else and forgot that you'd done that. When the crafting is completed at the end of the season, you'll automatically progress to the next one and get an auto save. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments. Feel free to leave a like, subscribe and hit the bell button to be notified when new videos come out. See you soon.